it feels like we are turning the corner. Worst might have been over for stocks. But then again, this year has been brutal. How many times this year we have seen 3-4% to rallies only to make new lows the following week? Leverage ETFs have been destroyed. You guys know I'm a huge leverage ETFs fan. Let's talk about what next for these crazy bunch of ETFs. Hey guys, welcome to Think Finance. Hope you're having a terrific long weekend. My name is Raj and on this channel, I love sharing investment ideas, collaborate with you guys and find ways to make a buck or two. Finally, finally, we closed on a green week. We had seven consecutive down weeks for the market. $1.25 is what shoppers are now paying for most items at Dollar Tree. The company raised prices for the first time in its 35 year history. Thank you, inflation. But guess what? Inflation could be easing. At least that is what the market wants to believe based on the PCE price index that was released on Friday. Walmart and Target scared people off. But recent earnings from retailers like Macy's, Alta Beauty, Nordstrom and others lead us to believe consumer is alive and well. Indeed, some retailers raised future guidance. Feels like interest rates, geopolitical tensions, recession fears, all is baked in and market is looking ahead. Does that mean last week was the ultimate bottom? I don't know. What I do know is that NASDAQ is still down around 25% and I like the recent price action. We finally had a green week. Here are some comments from a tech analyst I like to hear. I think we're going to see a nice bear market rally. There's a lot to love about these rallies and they can be pretty significant. And if you look at the frequency of these rallies, they've happened 16 times since 2000. And the magnitude has been surprisingly impressive. They're up 22%. That would suggest that this bear market rally is going to, uh, we're about halfway through it. There's still another, call it 12% upside to this. So I think we're going into a recession. So 12% upside in the short term. He also believes we are headed into a recession. Here's my gut, and I could be totally off. Looking at how painful this year has been, recent price action, and some historical data more in these videos, I tend to agree. A short-term bounce is in the making. We closed strongly above the 10-day moving average for the market. The overall trend, of course, is still negative. I do expect a decent second half, but I don't think we should expect a V-shaped recovery. If we end the year anywhere close to flat, that'll be huge. Volatility will persist, but this is a year to accumulate your favorite stocks and ETFs. Personally, I put some new money to work and also did a few other things to manage my portfolio and take advantage of the sell-off. More on that in a bit. By the way, there is a link in the description to my portfolio if you care to know where I'm invested. Also, I try to post major moves I make on Twitter and stock tweets. In this video, I want to focus on leveraged ETFs, talk about how they have performed relative to the market, what you should expect and moves I made to manage my investments in these ETFs on steroids. Warning, leverage ETFs is not for everyone. If you're new to investing, you should not be investing in leveraged ETFs. You can lose significant amount of your portfolio if market goes south. I'm a huge fan of these four leveraged ETFs. Depending on where we are in the market, they make 35 to 50 percent of my long-term portfolio. Let's look at the damage. S&P as of today is off by 14% from its 52-week high. UPRO is down 40%. percent 
T triple Q that follows the Qs is off by 64%, TCL 56%, and SEMIs or SOXL by 66%. No wonder my long-term portfolio is in a mess. For the year, I'm down 28%. Thank you, Leverage ETS. It works both ways. You can amplify your gains when markets are going up, but it can also destroy your portfolio when stocks go down. You need a strategy to manage these. More on that in a bit. If you follow this channel and have watched my videos on leverage ETFs, you know what I'm talking about. I want to stress one key point about these crazy ETFs. Yeah, I get it. It works 3x the market move. So if the Qs go up 5%, T triple Qs will move 15%. I will recover 15% of my portfolio value, right? See, that's wrong. And that's the point I want to discuss. It's important to understand the actual dollar impact as well. Let's look at this example. Let's say you invest $100 in the Qs and T triple Qs, and market moved down 5%, and the next day it moved up 5%. You will end up losing more by investing in T triple Qs versus the Qs. And I love using this phrase. This is not magic. This is just math and how percentages work. If you can't deal with massive moves in leverage ETFs, you should not be investing in these. So how do you deal with such massive moves? I've done videos on this, but here's the short answer. Buy the dips at regular intervals and rebalance the rips when your investment in these ETFs hit a certain portfolio allocation. This way, you minimize your actual dollar impact when the market drops and over time end up lowering your average cost. For me, I buy more every time NASDAQ drops 10%, 20%, and 30%. Bigger the drop, higher the amount I end up investing. For UPRO, I track it to S&P drop. My upper limit is 50%. In a rising market, every time my leverage ETF allocation hits 50%, I tend to rebalance into non-leverage positions and lock in my gains in leveraged ETFs. And when allocation drops to low 30s, I tend to buy more. Depending on where we are in the market, I'm around 35 to 50% of my long-term portfolio in leveraged ETFs. At the end of 2021, leveraged ETFs made 68% of my portfolio. This was across all my investment accounts, M1, Fidelity, and retirement accounts. As I said earlier, I rebalance every time the allocation hits 50%. But I decided to stay long since end of the year is seasonally strong for stocks and also want to delay the tax bill. First week of 2022, I rebalanced leverage ETFs down from 68% to 38%. Since then, I've rebought these when market dropped 10%, 20%, and recently 30%. Indeed, I dropped a nice stash of new cash when NASDAQ breached 30%. Can it go lower? Sure it can, but the way I see it, I got these at a 30% discount and my average cost is down big. Again, have a strategy that works for you and stick to it. Otherwise, don't invest in leverage ETFs. What else did I do? Earlier in the year when I reduced my allocation down to 38%, a huge chunk of that 38% stayed in UPRO. With the tech and semis rec, I moved a lot of money from UPRO into T triple Qs, TCL, and SOXL. Here is how my overall allocation looks like across all my accounts. Leverage ETFs are at 46% as of today. Also did some leaps options for T triple Qs and SOXL. More on that in this video. Close that position when I hit my profit target earlier than expected in March. There are other creative strategies you can use like selling puts and getting a sign at a lower price. The whole idea is to bring down your average cost. 
the worst thing you can do is close your positions. As I keep saying, buy the dips and rebalance the rips. That is my strategy. Make sure you have one before thinking about investing in leverage ETFs. Check out my leverage ETFs playlist if you have questions on how these work. Don't let anyone tell you that leverage ETFs are for day trading only. That's all I have guys. Hope this was useful. Let me know in the comments how you are using this product. Until next time, peace.